Hello, I'm Fabio Carrara from the Insti Institute of CNR in Pisa, and I'm going to present our contribution to the CISAP 2020 special session on artificial intelligence and similarity techniques. In this work, we explore the machine learning approach to the estimation of distances in metric spaces when pivots or reference objects are used. Uh, pivots or reference points are widely adopted when building indexes for metric spaces. Uh, generally, uh, once a set of pivots is chosen, uh, the distances between an object and all the pivots uh, form a real valued vector that we call pivoted embedding in this work. And this pivoted embedding can be used in multiple ways. For example, it can be stored to build indexes exploring, exploiting the triangle inequality, such as uh, AESA and M-trees. Or you can compute its permutation for building permutation-based indexes for large-scale approximate search, just to mention a few. Uh, but most importantly, this pivoted embedding provides a way to embed a metric object in a Euclidean space that is easier to index and to work with in general with respect to metric spaces. In this work, we asked ourselves if we can use machine learning to extract information about the distance between two metric objects, starting from their pivoted embeddings with respect to a common set of re reference points. Uh, we formulate our goal as the solution of a regression problem and for this, consider a set of pivots and two objects, X and Y. Uh, we build a model that, take, that takes in input uh, the pivoted embedding of X with respect to our chosen pivots and the pivoted embedding of Y. And we optimize the parameter of the model in order to predict the, distance, the distance between X and Y. The model would also need to know how pivots are placed relative to one another in the metric space. So we also give as input to the model the linearized dis distant metrics uh, of the pivots. Instead of fitting our model to directly produce the distance, uh, we decide to create a submodel phi that independently embeds each input into another Euclidean space in such a way that the L2 distance between the embeddings of X and Y gives us the original distance between X and Y. This is usually done in metric learning scenarios as it provides more flexibility and usability when building indexes. Each object can be processed independently and indexed with optimizers indexed for uh, Euclidean spaces. Thus, our goal is to learn this Euclidean embeddings, starting from the pivoted embeddings. The parametric model phi takes as input the pivoted embedding E of a metric object and the distance matrix P between pivots and produces the desired Euclidean embedding. As, as the architecture for this model, we choose to dedicate a separate subnetwork for each input then concatenate their outputs and give them to, ma to a final common subnetwork that produces the final embeddings. Each subnetwork is implemented as a stack of residual blocks, where each block is composed by two fully connected layers, batch normalization and a rectifier linear unit activation that are combined as shown here in this figure. We explored two main architectural hyperparameters that are the depth of the network, that is the number of residual blocks used in the network without considering the last layer, and the fusion strategy that controls when we perform the concatenation of the two input subnetworks. In the, year, in the early fusion strategy, we concatenate the, uh, the two branches at the input level in the mid-fusion fusion strategy, we concatenate the information from the two subnetworks at half the depth of the network, while in the late fusion strategy, we concatenate just before the last layer. In this 
preliminary phase in each residual block, we choose to set the output dimensionality as the input one and not to put any dimensionality reduction or bottlenecks in the model. Uh, the dimensionality of the last output can be chosen arbitrarily. So we set it to be the, num the number of pivots n, uh, used use during the computation of the pivoted embedding, uh, just to compare with other methods that produce embeddings with similar dimensionality. Here on the right, uh, you can see in a schematic way all the eight architecture that we tested. The C in the circle represents concatenation and the dimensionality of the output of each block is reported in parentheses in, inside the block. And, and here N stands for the number of pivots. To train our model, we use mini batch SGD. So the training batches are construct, constructed online during training as follows. First, we randomly pick N objects from the training set of metric objects as the pivots, uh, as the set of pivots. And also from the training set, we randomly pick uh, B pairs of objects, where B is the batch size. And then we compute the network inputs that are uh, the pivoted embedding of all the objects in the pairs with respect to the, the pivots, and then the distance matrix between the pivots. And finally, we compute also the network targets, that is the distances between the two elements in, the, in each couple in the original metric space. The loss function we optimize is the average smooth L1 loss between the predicted distance and the target distance. The smooth L1 loss function is used to avoid instabilities due to large errors at the beginning of the training process. When the error is low enough, it behaves like uh, the classical mean square error. For the evaluation of our model, we perform experiment with the YFCC 100 million image dataset. In particular, we used a subset of uh, deep learned uh, global features extracted from 1 million natural images taken from this dataset. We used the first 750k for training, another 150k for the validation and model selection and then the last 100k for testing and reporting metrics. As the metric for the evaluation, we report here the mean average percentage error computed on couples of object samples from the test set. And those are the results. Uh, the table shows uh, the mean and the standard deviation of the absolute percentage error of each architecture that we tested, one per row. The columns from left to right contain results for increasing number of pivots n. Uh, from these results, uh, we can see that the early fusion seems to be the most promising strategy, with the four deep model achieving the lowest error for most of the values of n. On convergence, the error tends to degree as more pivots are used reaching roughly a 13% average error where, when n is 128. However, we notice that overall, the prediction tend to swing dramatically around the target value as the standard deviation of the error is quite high. Other fusion strategy often fail to converge as can be seen by the many missing values in, in this table. But among the shallower and more lightweight models, the one deep late fusion models provide a good trade-off between performance and model size. A main limitation of this model is, is its size that increases quadratically as n increases. For this reason, we reported uh, results only up to 128 pivots as higher values quickly exceed the memory usually available on single GPUs, that is roughly uh, 10 gigabytes, and make the approach impractical to adopt. To put our results in context, we compared our best models to the state-of-the-art algorithm that 
face the same problem we are trying to solve here, that is the N simplex projection by Connor, Vadicamo, and Rabitti. This is a geometric method that embeds n plus one metric points, n pivots, and one data object into an n-dimensional Euclidean space isometrically. So computing the L2 distances between the embeddings of two data objects provides lower bounds and upper bounds of the actual distance between the object in the original metric space, given that we keep the n pivots fixed. Uh, the upper and lower bounds tend to improve as more pivots are used until the bounds eventually converge to the actual distance value. And this plot shows the mean average percentage error of our method and some variation of the n-simplex approach. The orange and red lines are obtained when using respectively the lower bound and upper bound provided by the n-simplex projection as the estimate of the real distance. The green line instead show the error when we take as the estimate of the distance the mean between the upper and lower bound, uh, while the blue line represents our approach. We can see that our model provides better performance with respect to the pure upper and lower bounds given by the n-simplex method. And has an average error that is comparable with the finer mean estimate, but it's way less consistent, especially when n is less than 8, where performance also degrades. Moreover, with large values of n, the error of the simplex method decreases towards zero, while our method does not guarantee this. Overall, the method we presented and explored here is a mixed bag of pro and cons when compared to the end simplex. Our method is general and can be applied to generic metric spaces, while the end simplex requires a, sp a space to be supermetric and thus satisfying a specific property called the four point property. On the other hand, the end simplex provides guarantees and upper and lower bounds to the predicted distance, while our method does not. Concerning computational costs, the offline training time of the end simplex is cubic in the number of pivots, while the training phase of our network depends on the number of iterations needed to converge, but usually takes longer. However, once trained, our model can handle different set of pivots, while the simplex approach needs to repeat the offline procedure for each new set of pivots. Uh, the embedding time for both methods is quadratic in the number of pivots, our method depending also on the depth of the network. However, the simplex embedding procedure is iterative in nature and hardly parallelizable. And when comparing GPU implementation of both methods, our network is often faster. Memory consumption is Another weak spot for our model, the n-simplex approach has a quadratic memory consumption, while the size of the model increases way more for increasing number of the pivots. Um, last but not least, the size of the embedding is fixed to the number of pivots for the n-simplex, while our approach permits also smaller or arbitrary values to be considered. In conclusion, in this work we explored this deep learning approach for estimating metric distances from pivoted embeddings. Our approach based on regression is applicable to generic metric spaces and in our preliminary experiments it provided a fast and fair approximation. On the downside it does not provide any theoretical guarantees on the estimation and currently is very memory hungry. In future work we plan to tackle the memory consumption problem and reduce the model size introducing bottlenecks or recurrence in the architecture and exploring also smaller embedding sizes. Then we plan to perform a thorough evaluation using metric datasets and measuring also information retrieval metrics such as precision recall curves where possible. And if results are promising, we will explore applications such as pivot selection and new indexing strategies with dynamically chosen pivots. 
And that's all. Uh, thank you for your attention.